welcome back today. I am in South Beloit, Illinois. I'm here for the VSCDA event and they have a special Sprite and Midget race this weekend. I will be competing in it with the Sprenzel Sebring Sprite. Let's take a look at what else is here. Welcome to the Blackhawk Classic 32. We've got some large race groups this weekend, okay? We are fully subscribed in group two and in group eight. So please, when you're out there on the track with 39 of your best friends, please race in the spirit of vintage racing. This morning I ran the practice race and I just got done with qualifying. This car being under one liter and not using the type of engines that the Americans run, I was one of the slowest cars in the group. I still have another qualifying session tomorrow and then we'll see where my starting position for the race will be.
Welcome to Saturday morning, day two. We hope everybody had a really good time on Friday. This is a Triumph TR2, and this is serial number 01. So this is the first production Triumph TR2. Sebring officially has its first race under its belt now. I have another race later today and then two races tomorrow, one being an all Sprite and midget race. I'll talk to you later. I need to get the car checked out for the next race. I'll give you a quick tour around the car, show you some things that might have changed since last time you saw it. I did switch over to an Optima battery. I had to put my transponder on the car, so just a couple wires right here. I can disconnect it for when it's being transported so the transponder's not running. I had to switch out the radiator cap. The one on the test day was leaking. Inside the car, I now have a working speedometer as well as a working oil temp gauge. Although I don't think that I have looked at the speedometer even once during any of the sessions. Inside, the fire system is now installed, and over here is my cool suit cooler. This is just a portable bag. 
that holds ice inside of it and it has its own little battery and then pumps ice cold water over there to my suit. The Sprenzel Sebring Sprite just finished its second race. The race ended in a really weird pace car coming in right at the last second and to a checker flag finish. And I was the first car behind the pace car with a lot of really fast cars behind me. But the Sprenzel worked well with no problem, so on to the Sprite and Midget race tomorrow. Here's a couple NSU Prins 1000s. In front of this Datsun 510, we have an Elva. This is my favorite class, the most interesting. This is the pre-war class. This looks to be an old Indy cover. Next to it, we have an Amel car. This is definitely a single seater. Shift between your legs there. Then we have a couple Morgans. This is a Morgan Plus Four. Surprisingly, I've never owned a Morgan. It's probably something I will own at some point. It's a pretty crazy cage design. It looks pretty weird without the dual spare tires sitting there. The Morgan next to it does not have a roll cage at all. Roll cages are not required in this pre-war class. And you will see a few cars here that are not pre-war, but they're of sort of a pre-war design, so they're still accepted into this class. And one of those cars is our next car, this MGTD. Of course, this is not a pre-war car, but because it looks like a pre-war car and is about the same speed as most of these cars, it's allowed to race with the other pre-war cars. And we've got a much older MG and then the last of the T-Series, the MGTF. And you can see how much different the modern TF is from the older MGs. But these MGTFs are allowed to run with the other pre-war cars. Some neat racing seats. Strange cage design. Must be a taller driver and they needed a little extra bit to give them those two inches above the helmet. Then we've got a couple more MGs. 
Both of these are TDs. It's a beautiful MG, but I'm seeing this car over here in the trailer. Let's check that out. This is another single seat race car, probably an old Indy car. Can't tell from here what it is. And a couple more MGs. There we have an old Bentley. These are great big headlights. This is a pretty big car. So even though it's an old car, it's a pretty imposing car. Dashboard is absolutely massive on this car. I have a little rally timer there. These gauges are huge. They're much bigger than you see in other more contemporary sports cars from the 50s and 60s. This thing is awesome. Look at the little leather ties to keep the wheel nut from unspinning. And then next to it, we have an MGB and a Morgan. You might recognize this car from my channel. This is Jeff Parada's Bug Eye Sprite that he drove around the country and then he also took to Europe. Well, he got himself a race car now. And at the last event, he did his racing school. And he is here trying to complete some races and complete his rookie requirements. You wouldn't think that a big muscle car like this Dodge would be very fast around a small corner track like this but this thing was screaming out there in fact I was surprised at how it looked like it was embarrassing the e-type looks like someone has some work to do on their Spitfire when I saw this out on track I thought that maybe he had lost a wheel but I didn't think that I saw a wheel off so he must have broken his suspension and the car about fell on the ground looks like he'll probably have it fixed for tomorrow and be back at it though Here's a beautiful Datsun Z in a BRE inspired livery. Here's a beautiful Saab Sonnet. I was surprised how quick the Saabs are this weekend. And then we have an Alpha. I would love to drive one of these in a race. I bet this is just an amazing car to have on the racetrack. We've got a couple more Datsuns, this time a Datsun 510 in BRE livery. Good morning, it's the last day of the races and right now we have a pretty good thunderstorm. So I parked the car inside I'm going to wait for the rain to stop. I don't even know if they are going to be doing any races right now because there is lightning in the area. So we're just going to have to wait out the storm and see what happens later. We had about an hour's worth of thunderstorms, but looks like the rain is gone for the rest of the day. We can now get our cars out and get them ready.
that wasn't good. The car seemed to be running okay when I drove up to grid, but I did not make it the entire pace lap even. There's something wrong with the car. It's not running right. I don't have enough power. Sounds like it's almost running on only two cylinders. So let's investigate. I loosened both of the covers on the float bowls so I can make sure that they are getting fuel. Both carbs are getting fuel. So move on to ignition. I pulled the spark plugs out. The rear two plugs look okay, but the front two plugs are just totally black. So I'll clean these up, see if it uh, comes out of it. Right now I don't have the fuel pump running. That way it's not dumping any excess fuel in. I leaned the carburetors all the way out and the car still ran, so I ran it a little bit to make sure that I burn everything off and then I readjusted the carburetors. Still not as smooth as it used to be. Well, I'm gonna call it right here. The car is still not running right. It barely had enough power to make itself into the trailer. So I'm going to take it back. We can make sure that it's running correctly on the dyno, make sure that we don't damage anything. So it's not that big of a deal. I'm just gonna call it today and pack up and we'll find out what happened with this car later. It's the next day and I'm back here at the shop. Let's take a look at what went wrong with the car. Started with a compression test on the car, and as you can see, 140, 130 on the first two cylinders, and then virtually nothing on the last two. So pulled the head off, and there we go, a giant gasket leak between number three and number four. So we'll get this fixed up, and we'll get the car back on track. 